Hey guys, uh, this is Particular here, and I want to talk about a Tempest healer. Um, I've put this up for some time, um, but I've seen so many talk about it, I've gotten a lot of questions as well, and there seems to be a lot of hesitation about if it's viable or not, and how it compares towards a Druid healer. Um, so first off, I'm just going to talk about the build and my, my thought process there, and then I'm going to compare it with uh, other builds. So this build is going to be based around auras to heal. So for that we need two traits, Powerful Aura and Elemental Bastion. That's the basis of this build. So onto choosing a weapon. Um, apart from healing, what you want to do with the build is deal as much damage as you can. Uh, now the staff can both provide good healing in the uh, water attunement and it can also provide good damage in the fire. And you have one trait line free so you can choose the fire trait line for persisting flames and the trait buffs there to deal pre pretty good damage. Um, the the <coughs> downfall of this though is that overhealing is a real thing. So we don't want to heal unless we have to. And then we want to fluidly change between de doing damage and healing. Now with staff you can do damage in fire and if you need to heal then you need to go into water. and that means that you're cut off from damage for a long period of time. Um, so instead of going with a staff, um, we are going with a fresh air build instead. So the main hand will be a dagger. So on to choosing an offhand. Uh, first off, the focus. It doesn't have that much for healing. What it has is a blast in earth with magnetic aura or wave, sorry, and then it has fire shield, uh, which is another aura that you can do and it'll heal your allies. The offhand dagger has some nice damage, and then it has the frost aura and the cleansing wave, which is a good heal. Uh, it also has a blast in earth, but the blast is pretty clumsy and takes a long time to cast. Warhorn, on the other hand, has a blast and an aura in earth which will be a double buff there. It has a nice damage as well in air with the lightning orb, but the big contender is the water heals. Tidal Surge has a short cooldown but a bit less of a heal than Cleansing Wave, uh, but you also have a water field which you can blast with three of your blasts um, as well as healing. Um, in, in short, the Warhorn just slightly outperforms the two other offense that you have uh, by both doing more damage and more healing. So, onto gear. I don't use Magi gear and I don't use Cleric's gear. Instead, I use Silet's gear. It's pretty expensive, but I can keep power and precision and then just have a minor stat of healing power. Instead, I choose Runes of the Monk that will boost my bonus outgoing healing. Um, I choose to stack these buffs instead of stacking healing power to get the heals going. So you can see my healing power is just slightly below 700 without food. Weapons will also be select and I use a sigil of transference and a sigil of concentration. The transference is definitely a must have for 10 additional percent on the outgoing healing, but the sigil of concentration is kind of a uh, quality of life. Um, if you want a variant, I would go with the sigil of force instead of the concentration and that way you don't have to lose that much damage compared to a fresh air damage build. For trinkets, I still use the same thing as I use for my damage builds, so I have assassins, earrings, and the rest of the things are berserker stats. So let's get on to traits. Uh, we already have the base here with the three Grandmaster traits, powerful aura, elemental bastion, and fresh air. So let's look on the water traits first here. Soothing ice. Um, it's definitely the one you want to have here. It'll proc and under aura, which will heal. It's it's the best choice you can go on the adept line. For masters tier here, um, you want to go with Aquamaster's training. It won't only buff your damage by ten percent, which will be very easy to keep up since you will be the healer, but it will also reduce the cooldown on all of your water skills by thirty three percent. This means that all of your water skills have gotten a huge buff. 
For the master's level on the air trait line, you want to go with Aeromancer's training. This will buff your precision and you will always be in uh, air. And it will also reduce the cooldown on your shocking aura, which is an instant heal for five of your party. So for adept trait in air, you have some options. Most of the time I go with Ferocious Winds, um, but you can also go for Zephyr's Boon, which is the top trait. Um, it really depends if you have Revenants or some Fury provider in your party, then you don't want to use Zephyr's Boon. But this can be a way that you can provide Fury for your team um, without losing too much. And lastly, uh, Tempest Traits. On the first Adept tier, you want to go with Unstable Conduit. Because um, you will, will be overloading often with fresh air and uh, it's a nice way to provide auras for yourself and your team to heal additionally. Um, it will increase your heal per second by, by some marginal amount. On the Masters tier, you want to go with Invigorating Torrents. Um, I think that Vigor is probably the least appreciated uh, defensive boon there is. Uh, it's immensely powerful to be able to keep permanent Vigor on your entire team. Another defensive buff that the Ellie has is Frost Aura. You can get Frost Aura from numerous things, say Flash Freeze, Soothing Ice Traits, Rebound in Water or Overloading in Water. And all of these will give your party Frost Aura. And Frost Aura decreases the damage taken by 10%, kind of like a um, soft protection. Um, Tempest provides protection to your group by using the Earth Overload. The Overload will grant you a pulse that gives you protection, but the big contender here is the Lasting Field afterwards that will give the same effect but for a longer duration. Um, after a few seconds here, I will have huge buffs on me, and this will be granted to the entirety of your party. So let's compare the Aura Healer to Druid. Um, well, Druid is a good healer. Uh, the kind of downfalls it has is that it has downtime on the celestial form and secondly it's it's difficult to pull off the heals especially if your team is moving um, both of those things the aura healer doesn't doesn't have most of the tempest heals are instantaneous and there's definitely not much of a downtime where you can't heal secondly powerful aura has a 600 range which means that every time you cast an aura um, you, you, you can't even avoid to heal your party if they're close to you. Um, and you don't have to aim those small AOEs very well. Um, so I find the Tempest Healer being more reliable with no downtime and no chance to miss. Um, additionally, the defensive support we have with permanent regen and vigor, as well as protection and frost aura upkeep, it makes the heals much more efficient and your party should take less damage overall. Um, what the Druid has over the Tempest Healer is definitely offensive support with Frost Spirit, uh, Spotter, as well as that Glyph uh, damage buff. So what I find is that it's really a matter of if your team will be comfortable with a Druid Healer. I find the Tempest being a safer option and more reliable option. And it's, it's kind of a discussion between if the team is able to perform with optimal rotation um, with a Druid Healer, then that the Druid Heal healer will be better. Tempest on the other hand will be able to keep the scholar buff of your team more reliably and also has better personal damage and these damage reduction buffs. Um, so I feel that if your team has to play more controversial uh, having a druid then having a Tempest will definitely be the better option. So what do I lose going healer compared to a fresh air damage build? Well, I choose to go with Silid Armor instead of going Berserker, so I lose uh, that ferocity. I also choose to go with Monk Runes instead of Scholar, so I lose that 10% damage buff. Um, Sigil of Transference over Sigil of Air, so that's the last there, because you can still go with Sigil of Force. I also use Delicious Rice Bowl over um, Seaweed Salad, so that's another damage loss. The reason why this build can heal so well is because we stack that outgoing healing buff. So Sigil of Transference, Monk Runes, that's 20%. Aquatic Benevolence is another 15. 
And then the food over here, delicious rice bowl, will add another 10% bonus outgoing heals. In total then, every single heal that we do, every aura that we do, uh, will be 45% more effective on the allies than it is myself. So the aura heal trait that you have, Elemental Bastion, will not heal for almost 1.2k, but it will heal for almost 1.7k instead. And this is the case for every single aura that you will apply. Um, attuning to water will heal allies for 3k instead of 2k. It all becomes very interesting when you look at the elite skill, Rebound. Initially, this should heal an ally for 3.3k, but since you have bonus outgoing healing, this will be close to 5k for all allies, making this skill pretty powerful as a save skill. So, as for rotation, um, you want to play this build very fluidly. Um, you want to use the same fresh air damage rotation as uh, with other builds, basically overloading in air, going into fire, and then back into air to overload again. But once you see the need, either for more defensive buff or um, healing, you want to just lean over or use those shouts in order to give the uh, support that you need. As soon as you're done healing, you can go back to doing damage. Since you have fresh air, uh, there won't be any downtime in the damage rotation. A thing to think about is that the water field you have in water can be blasted with frozen ground, which is also water, uh, as well as aftershock and um, the sand squall skill in earth. Giving out protection will decrease your damage by a lot, but uh, remember that the duration will be huge especially with City Love Concentration and the Facet of Nature from the Revenants. And also, the Mesmer can double that boon duration with Signet of Inspiration. So the actual protection upkeep will be huge, even though the investment will be low. Anyways, that's it for me guys. Um, I hope I've answered at least some of your guys' questions, and I'm very interested to hear what you think of this build compared to the regular Druid healer. Anyways, thanks for watching.